Okay, here's take two. So, uh, Chris, about, I don't know, a month ago, six weeks ago, two months, who even knows at this point, you and I uh, did a show on a TV movie called Killdozer. Yeah, it was awful. And a review of it, I didn't think was up to our normal standards. In addition to that, you had some other issues with it. You want to elaborate on those? I had some content-related issues. I think uh, some things occurred on screen that I, I don't think represent us in uh, at our best. Yeah. Put it that way. Yeah. Some some things occurred that you feel would hold us back from being successful on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. So As talk shows. So we buried that episode. Uh, but now what happened this week was um, last week we didn't get to do a show because uh, – Smoke from Canadian wildfires engulfed the area, and uh, we it was dangerous to go outside. Um, and then this week, uh, we had a much more mundane problem. Uh, we, we just didn't do the work we were supposed to do. Yeah. So we're going to do our next episode. Did we say Natalia Grace? We didn't. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's a uh, there's a recent docu series on investigation discovery called the curious case of Natalia Grace, and it involves a little girl or pa- perhaps an adult girl with dwarfism who's adopted by an American family, and then everything just goes. It gets nutty. Yes. Yeah. So that'll be next week. Um, but until then, we have this killdozer thing that we thought, well, we can edit out the parts that we don't like, which is most of it. And, uh, and, and, and then we'll have something. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe this was originally supposed to be episode 60, so it will remain episode 60. Okay. And the parts we cut out, maybe, um, maybe we'll release that on DVD sometime. Yeah, or uh, on our Patreon. Yeah. <laughs> and then we'll get canceled. So let's do that at the end of our careers. Uh, we will get canceled, Chris. <laughs> oh, please. That was not... That was not all my fault. You approved everything that happened. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Beforehand. Okay, but and that's why it went out, right? Because I approved You approved everything. of me doing it before we filmed it. Yeah. And then I'm, you stopped the show to yell at me. I, I think you're thinking of a different time, Chris. You stopped the show to yell at me. No, I think these things occurred. <laughs> these were two different shows we're talking about. No, they weren't. Oh, no. <laughs> when did What show did you yell at me at? I, I don't remember, but uh, that, that, that was, it was before... Okay, it was the week before, or maybe the week after. Yeah, these are different. These are different incidents, Chris. No, it was when when the letter came up. The letter came up. Yeah. Oh no, what? No, that I, was when you stopped the show to yell at me. Oh no, 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 no. It was uh, it was a different puppet, different puppet. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah and <laughs> that was a different show. Uh, well, and that got cut out too. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, we have a lot of bonus content then. All right. I think it's time to roll Killdozer. What do you think? Okay, let's do it. The Reese Company. Oh, come on. We're just having some fun. Well, no, we are by enjoying someone else's um, uh, situation he found himself in. Yeah. And, and we, don't, we don't need to dwell on any of that. We don't need to bring any of that up again. No, no, no. Yeah. No, no reason for any kind of uh, yeah. you know, a reprisal. Yeah. We're not, we're not going to keep making jokes about that. No. That'd the, be immature and unprofessional. Yes. Yeah. And it would make us jerks if we did such a thing. Yeah. Okay. The Rees Company. Crack open a tip of Genesee. Watch the pictures as they travel through your neighbor's Wi-Fi. It's The Rees Company. I'm Steve Rees, the bull of American broadcasting alongside the great Chris Morganti, how are you, Chris? I'm good. Uh, I, I watched our movie of the week of the week, and uh, it, it, it's not good, Steve. Didn't care for it? it it's not good. Yeah, Killdozer. <laughs> it aired on February 9th, 1974 on A, Beetle C. It features an all-star, mostly dead cast. For example, Clint Walker, Carl Betts, Robert Urich. Mm. 
It's yeah, this is the second week in a row we've done a movie that was made before either of us were born. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're going back pretty far here. And uh, the story goes back even farther. It's based on a 1944 short novel by a guy called Theodore Sturgeon. Do you know of anything else he wrote? No, but I do know something interesting about this guy. All right. He's, um, he's the proponent of something called Sturgeon's Law. Okay. Have you ever heard that term? Uh, I don't think so. It refers back to, uh, he was quoted one time as saying, um, 90% of science fiction is crud, although 90% of everything is crud. Yeah. Well, okay. Fair enough. So I guess in some circles that's become conventional wisdom. Um, so in Killdozer, we have a six-man construction crew. Yeah. And they're on an island 200 miles off the coast of Africa. Yeah, so it's yeah, it was like a, a former World War II air base, I guess, or or naval base, and uh, they're demolishing it. That's what they're there for. Yeah, they're putting in an airstrip, I believe. So I, I imagine it was a naval base. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. So uh, before we see any of that, we see this. This is the beginning of the film. Yeah, we can stop it there. Um, now, see, when I said this at the beginning of the film, I really meant that. There were no, at this point, no opening credits. Which, you know, I, I, I hate when they overdo the opening credits, you know? Yeah. Uh, this movie, I did a great job. The one thing they did a great job of is, is how they did the credits. So let's, let's take a look when they actually got to that. With this, uh, this is six minutes in. That's it. They didn't even stop the action. And then 20 seconds later, they do this. We have a, a little more. 20 seconds later, into the action, we're treated to this. Yeah, all right. I didn't know that was going to take so long. But anyway, they just flash that up there six minutes in. You know, they don't even stop the film. That's how credit should be done. Right, yeah. following all union guidelines, but uh, not making it an ordeal. Yeah, you don't need to shoot uh, from a helicopter three minutes of footage of a guy driving to his job in the L.A. freeway, which we've seen in previous films. Um, all right, so, so we, saw the, we see the meteorite, uh, we see the construction crew. Uh, this is the next scene we can roll here. Okay. Done, kid. Pause. Yeah, probably not the best idea for the prop guy to use enriched uranium for that meteorite. <laughs> yeah. Very, very rare form of cancer it was, Chris. Oh, that's what happened to Robert Urich? It's like leg cancer. Oh, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. What, what was he in? Was he number one in uh, Austin Powers? Um, I don't, I don't know. What, what was he? Oh, yeah, so, yes, okay. yes. Uh, he was also in Vegas. He number was the two star of the show was. Vegas. Okay. I think he was in uh, Heart to Heart also. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, he did uh, local radio ads for... <laughs> yes, he, he, he did local radio ads for a certain city. <clears throat> okay. He was also he also starred in, I forget the name of it now, but uh, a movie we discussed where he blew his hand off for insurance money. Oh, right, right, right. And yeah. also had uh, Gwyneth Paltrow and Matthew Perry. Yeah, yeah. Star-studded, yeah. unlike this. A ton of things. He's and the he, biggest name in this one. And he was also Spencer for Hire, who I, I believe did a series of TV movies as well as, as, well as a series. Oh, uh, well, then maybe he wasn't the heart-to-heart -heart guy. Maybe, maybe that was somebody else. I thought it... Heart-to-heart -heart is Robert Wagner. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. Well, he's such a big star, 
we'll be see we'll probably be seeing a lot of him in this film, right? <laughs> you let's, would think, yeah. Let's yeah, take yeah. a look. Yeah. Also, youngest guy, you would think healthiest guy, right? Yeah, so he's dead. Yeah. Um, and that blue thing that came from the meteorite takes over the bulldozer. That's pretty much the whole plot right there. That's everything, that, you know. It, yeah. uh, you'll see in this next scene, uh, you know, what happens when somebody tries to operate the bulldozer now that it's been possessed, I guess, taken over, whatever. Yeah, I'd say possessed is the yeah. good description. So. Sadly, he survives. Um, he cut the fuel line there, I guess, which, yep. which stopped it. But for some reason, uh, that doesn't stop it uh, the rest of the film. Uh, it make, it make, Continuity-wise, it makes zero sense. Well, I think it is referenced that uh, this thing has a, uh, not a mind of its own, but a power of its own. And right. they can't figure out the source of this um, yeah, but, energy. But in that case, he cut the fuel line and it, it saved him. It stopped. So why, that shouldn't have happened, right? That shouldn't have happened. Yeah. If it needs the fuel line to work, then how does it work after that happens? It's not explained well. But they do say, hey, we're not going to use this bulldozer anymore. They, they haven't figured out that it's possessed. They just think it's, like, malfunctioning or the company is operating it remotely because somebody there hates them. I, I, you know. That is a theory. The one guy claims there's a remote control being uh, employed. Yeah, yeah. But no one's supposed to be using the, the bulldozer. But then this one guy, uh, he needs to go play bass at a Bill Withers concert. So this happens. In fairness to the bulldozer, that radio was blasting Matchbox 20. Yeah. So that was their, that was their communication with the outside. Now, they're stuck for like a few days until a supply ship shows up. They can't contact anyone and ask for help or whatever. Um, uh, I don't even know what this next clip is. Let's just roll it. I think it's another guy being killed. All right. Well, this will be a surprise. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yes. Yeah. I forgot. His death takes like five minutes. There he is jumping out. Now, he makes an odd choice here. Yeah. He's on the run from a bulldozer. And if you've ever been stuck behind one in traffic, you know these can't go more than four miles an hour. <laughs> it seems it would be easily, easily outrun. Uh, yeah, I don't know how fast they go, but yeah. Be, definitely laying there and staring at it is not the best option. Or the option we see the next guy take. But uh, I get, we're going to see this. Uh, this is the same guy. Oh, it is. This, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Willie Tyler. Seeks refuge in the worst of all possible places. Well, a lot easier. They can just roll him into the grave. <laughs> now it got flattened. Yeah, I don't know why he thought that piece of metal would save him. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um... It took a long time for him to die. And then this next clip, we're going to see uh, what this movie considers character development. Hey, Dennis. Did I ever tell you I played in the Cotton Bowl? In 64, I caught two touchdowns. Good for you. Uh, that's just thrown in, in the middle of the movie, <laughs> apropos of nothing. <laughs> Yeah, you think, like, maybe he's going to save the day by throwing something really far <laughs> yes. or, or catching something at the end. 
That's, uh, that's what you assume would happen. That does not happen at right. all. Right. It, it's setting up him using his... Um, Football uh, skills. Yeah, his skill is going to come into play in a way that uh, helps he and his colleagues. Yeah. But it doesn't. Him and his colleagues. I apologize for the grammatical error. Uh, again, I don't know what this... Oh, this is a clip you wanted, so let's... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Chubb's got an idea. We ambush that dozer. Run his truck into it. And Chapa. Fire won't stop steel. It'll... Yeah, this guy just works all of his 9-11 conspiracy theories into <laughs> everything. <laughs> Jet fuel can't melt steel. <laughs> That's like, calm down. We don't even know what this 9-11 thing is yet. <laughs> um, all right, here's the third death. Now, there's six guys. Two of them are already dead. Mm -hmm. Here's here the third guy's going to die. Um, you know, all that, all that truck did was roll over, by the way, and it blew in, blew up into flames. So I, we see that a lot in, in particularly the, the ones in the seventies and the eighties where any incidental contact with a vehicle, it will just explode in right. a giant fireball. Um, all right. One more death. A lot of carnage in this film. Dutch. I'm going swimming! Hey, Jack! Hold it! Yeah, he's drunk. And he's going swimming. I don't know what he meant by that. All right, now he's stuck in some kind of quicksand. No, I don't know what. Can we pause it? I don't know why getting stuck in quicksand would cause the engine to shut off and not restart. Those two things don't seem to be connected. But that's what happens here. So once you see that your engine isn't going to start, you would probably just get out and run. You'd bail, yeah. Yeah. Well, let's see if he does that. I need a hero. Yeah. That, Steve, that's it. Pause it. <laughs> I was trying to think of what that scene reminded me of. <laughs> it's chicken from Footloose. <laughs> <clears throat> it's also, I think, uh, I think they did it in one of the airplane movies, too. Where, uh, or no, I think it was an Austin Powers movie. Where one of the henchmen is, be is uh, run over by a steamroller. You know, and it's a similar thing. Yeah. Wait a second. Um, ah, what's his name? Robert, um, who did I say was in Heart to Heart? Robert Wagner? Robert Wagner. Oh. He was the guy in Austin Powers, okay. too. So we've just attributed all of Robert <laughs> Wagner's career to this other guy <laughs> who was in this film for two minutes. And never allegedly murdered anybody. <laughs> Why are we dragging this guy's name through the mud <laughs> by association? But he was in Spencer for Hire. We're pretty sure he was in. Yes, he okay. was definitely okay. in Spencer for Hire and Vegas. Yes. Yeah, look at this. <laughs> Just jump out, dude. Well, they got there early. They all work at the same place as Beavis and Budhead, apparently. All right. We're going to have two more clips of this. We all see where this is going. Uh, huh? No. 103? Okay, here we go. All right. Well, then let's just roll it. We'll call an audible on the last one. <laughs> I 
So, you know, that, that could have been good. They, you know, they even got a cool little music thing in there. You got a battle of two, uh, you know, the two guys are in the crane and the bulldozer is, you know, and they're battling it out. It's kind of like Transformers it's or something. It's a big showdown. It's almost like a Western. Yeah. They, they show like 20 seconds of that and then they decide, no, it's not going to work. And then they have to come up with another plan to stop this thing. And they decide, Jim, this will be at uh, one minute, uh, 10 minutes and 54 seconds. Um, they decide that instead of trying to kill the bulldozer, they're, they're going to kill the alien that's possessing the bulldozer. Um, they don't know it's an alien. They just know it's a thing. Um, so then, then this happens. I mean, we can stop it there. I was going to let it run longer. It's just, it's it's a a, a bulldozer dying, basically, is what it is. Um, yeah. Yeah. And they, they electrocute it, much like uh, the second Jaws. Remember? Yeah. 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 So, uh, that's really all I had to say about this movie. It, it really, I mean, they did, it was bad, but they ended up making a sequel, oddly enough. Uh, so, it must have been sort of popular. Uh, the sequel was called Rape Tractor. Um, Nail in the coffin. The thing earlier, and now now <laughs> we're just, uh, thank you for participating in our program. We greatly appreciate uh, it. Like, you're not seeing this. <laughs> this isn't going out. <clears throat> what, Rape Tractor? Anything you'd, like to, anything you'd like to say about the movie before we rate it? Apparently I've said too much. Um, I'll rate it. Uh, I'm giving this half of a Meredith. Wow. Look, this is terrible. I mean, it's terrible. Why would anyone watch this? And that's your reasoning? Just why would anyone watch this? Or everything you've already said about it being boring? There were, there were comments. This thing had like 2,000 comments in, on YouTube. And there were people like, oh, man, I was so scared when I saw this as a kid. What? Who would be scared by this? How often do you encounter bulldozers in your life? I don't know. Yeah, I don't but know it, who would like this. But I don't know who would be scared by it. Yeah, but if you were a kid, I had Tonka trucks when I was a kid. Okay. And uh, if if they were portrayed as evil on television and I saw it, I might think, oh, man, I'm a little weirded out by my toy collection now. Well, I had a lot of Star Wars toys when I was kid. a kid. Uh, Darth Vader was evil. I was never scared of my Darth Vader action figure. But you knew going in that he was evil when you uh, when that was purchased. Okay. Uh, you know what? I'm not even going to argue. Bulldozers are generally regarded as uh, benevolent. Okay. Okay. <laughs> good point. Once again, good point. <laughs> well, oh, well, how would you rate this film? One, one, Meredith yeah. Baxter. Because it's really difficult to make a thrilling action movie with a villain who's a bulldozer. As I said, these can't go very fast. They, they could be easily outrun. Um, I, I don't know about that. I think maybe they can do like 20. Oh, should be hard for most you can outrun something that's you can, no. You can but, if, you, if you're in the Olympics, you can, you can dart. You can dart in directions a bulldozer cannot. Well, yeah, that's that's probably true. But no. so you know, this isn't going to culminate in some satisfying chase scene. In fact, the ultimate showdown is so static and anticlimactic, it doesn't feel like a victory for the characters involved. Never mind the fact that they're probably going to jail for life for killing their coworkers and blaming it on a possessed caterpillar. What's this? By the way, I want to correct myself with something I said earlier. A bulldozer is a perfect focal point for this film, this film because this film put me to sleep. Chris? Oh, dozer, as in dozing off. Yes. I got you. Good one. And, and the bull. Huh? Bulldozer. Oh. Yeah. I, 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 sometimes I forget you call yourself that. <laughs> Are we, are we ending the show? Uh, if there's anything else you'd like to talk about that we haven't, we can. Nope. All right, in that case, Chris, I think we did it. Thank you so much. Going out with a bang. For Chris Morgani and Jim Corhan, I'm Steve Rizoski. Oski Wawa. Tigers. Eat them all. We did it. Uh... <laughs>